Definitely like to say happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers that are out there and especially to the mothers of Emmanuel uh, from your pastor. We say again, happy Mother's Day and we're hoping that everyone is enjoying their day today. If you would, I'd like to pause for a moment and go before the Lord in the word of prayer before we get started here today. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you once again for your goodness and mercy. Lord, we thank you for this day. We know that it is the day that you have made, and so we do rejoice, and we're glad in it. Father, we pray today, even as we gather in your sanctuary, in your house today, to lift up and to magnify your glorious name. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, just for your faithfulness unto us, how you have kept us down through the years. Father, we thank you today, even as this day is a day which we celebrate as Mother's Day. We pray especially for mothers today, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of mothers that you have given unto us. And Father, we pray even now, God, for those uh, that are here and especially for those that are no longer here. We thank you for the memory of those, oh God, that have been impacted or been in our lives, that have impacted our lives. Father, we thank you right now as we pray for those that may be hurting because their mothers are no longer here. But we thank you, O oh God, because you have declared in your word that when our mothers and our fathers forsake us, then you will take us up. And so, Father, we bless you for your faithfulness and your grace today. Father, we're praying not only for those who, whose mothers may not be here, but we also remember today, Lord, those mothers that are here that may be hurting because of lost loved ones. We're asking, oh God, that you would touch their hearts today. Encourage them in a special way today. Let them know, oh God, that you are yet there and that you are concerned about them. And we thank you, oh God, just for being there in our lives. Now have your way today, Lord, in this sanctuary, over the airways, over the internet, God. We pray, oh God, that you would visit every home today. Let them feel your presence today. Father, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in thy sight. That there may be a word spoken, oh God, a life-giving word that would encourage someone today. We thank you for what you're going to do. We thank you for this privilege, oh God. Hallelujah. We give you glory, honor, and praise. We ask these blessings now. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. And amen. Amen. Well, certainly again, we're thankful for you joining us today in our East Sanctuary, our Cyber Sanctuary. Amen. As we're in the house of the Lord on today, and obviously today is a bit different. Uh, typically, we have our praise and worship team and our minstrels and musicians that are playing. Uh, but today is somewhat different. It's a special day. And so we want everyone, amen, while we're gathering in the house of the Lord, we want everyone to be able to enjoy the day as well, to spend more time with their mothers, amen, as we celebrate them on today. So we thank you for joining us. And I'd like to, at this time, uh, before we go any further, I'd like to, uh, to invite everyone to take a moment, amen, if you'd like to sow a seed into the ministry, if you'd like to give, to take a moment, amen, and to visit our website at EmmanuelNashville.com. That's EmmanuelNashville.com, amen, and you're able to tap on the giving tab, and you're able to give there. And if you prefer not to give online, would you like to mail in, you're able to mail in as well at P.O. Box 1196, Hendersonville, Tennessee. That's P.O. Box 1196, Hendersonville, Tennessee, at zip code 37077. But as always, we want to declare our offering creed, and we declare that as we give the Lord's tithe and offering, that we are believing the Lord for jobs, better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, checks in the mail, bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received. Father God, we are believing that every pew will be filled with people, and we are a debt-free church and a debt-free people. Everybody shout, it's offering time. Hallelujah. Amen. Again, please go ahead and make your way uh, to the online portal, or if you'd like again to mail that in, please feel free to do that as well. Uh, before we get into the word of the Lord, I would like also at this time to invite everybody, amen, to follow along with today's sermon. You're able to do so at the app entitled My Sermon Notes. That's the My Sermon Notes app. And today's message, along with other Bible studies and other messages, have been uploaded or downloaded uh, for you to be able to view and to follow along with us. And lastly... Amen. I'd like to also invite all of you to join us. Everybody that's out there today uh, that's visiting with us, perhaps 
I'd like to invite you to join us on Wednesday nights at 6.45 for prayer. Amen. 6.45 p.m. for evening prayer, which leads us into our Wednesday night evening Bible study at 7.30 p.m. We would love to have you there. Well, we're grateful again for this opportunity, and I don't desire to be before you very long today. Uh, I, I celebrate my mother today, uh, Lady Frances Crenshaw, and uh, while I'm on the mound uh, taking care of business now, I am eagerly anticipating spending time with her today, so if you would allow me, uh, we're going to get right into the word of the Lord. Amen. The, the, the scripture today is found as a very familiar passage of scripture, especially uh, in relationship to the day and to the day's festivities and celebration. And it's found in Proverbs chapter 31. Yes, Proverbs chapter 31. And most particularly, we want to look at verse number 10. Proverbs 31 Verse number 10. The writer here declares, he asks the question, who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. I want to stop there. I'm going to read that again. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. I want to talk to us today uh, from a subject entitled, Have You Seen Her? Have You Seen Her? Uh, oftentimes, I've stated before, and if you've been on our, our streams or been able to be with us in service, you perhaps have heard me say this before, but I've oftentimes said before that greatness and significance oftentimes seem to be realized in retrospect. I, I can't adequately explain it. I can't give you a reason as to why that seems to be the case, but it seems that it may be some uh, failing in the human condition. We have seems like an innate disability uh, to not fully understand or to comprehend the rare blessings that God oftentimes has given us that seem to be right in front of us. And if we're not careful, I must admit that if we're not careful uh, to be diligent and to be deliberate, uh, we will oftentimes not realize the value of a person or a thing until it's no longer easily accessible unto us. If you would just let me be myself here this morning as I begin to prepare uh, for this talk. I don't want to say a message, but as I begin to prepare for this talk, uh, these words fell in my mind. Uh, and these are the words of a very famous uh, song. And the words say, one month ago today, I was happy as a lark. But now I go for walks to the movies, maybe to the park. I have a seat on the same old bench to watch the children play. You know tomorrow is their future, but for me just another day. They all gather around me. They seem to know my name. We laugh and tell a joke, but it still doesn't ease my pain. I know I can't hide from a memory, though day after day I've tried. I keep saying she'll be back. But today again, I lie. Oh, I see her face everywhere I go. On the street and even at the picture show. Y'all know the words. Have you seen her? Oh, I hear her voice as the cold winds blow in the sweet music of my radio. Have you seen her? Now, I'm not exactly sure or certain as to why or, or whom the shy light say, yes, I'm 44 years old, but I remember that song. I'm not sure or certain as to whom the shy lights were singing about or who uh, the individual in the song was searching for, and I'm not really sure as to why this woman's presence is no longer uh, where it, it was or why now her presence is as rare and scarce as it is, but for whatever reason, uh, for whatever reason they are unable to find this individual, it has become a, 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 a convincing to me that somebody took somebody for granted. 
Uh, once we begin to consider this, we see that apparently this individual, this woman stood out uh, head and shoulders above the rest. And it seems that because she's no longer able to be found or accessed, uh, that there is a rarity that, that seems to now have come into the mind of the writer and the singer. In other words, they seem to really be searching for this woman. Well, as I begin to think about the words of that song and even the scripture, uh, I'm reminded as I, we look, amen, in the dictionary, we find that there is a definition that has been given to us in the dictionary for the word virtuous. Amen. The word virtuous. And essentially this word virtuous means being morally good, acting in conformity to moral laws, and practicing the moral duties by abstaining from the vice or from vices. In other words, to be virtuous means that this individual is of moral, sound, moral character. In other words, this individual has not only, amen, established their own uh, morality of life, but to be moral or to be virtuous means, amen, not only have I established or do I walk by particular moral rules, but these rules have been superseded, amen, by the divine moral code that God has given unto humanity. I'm going to pump my brakes here for a moment because I don't desire to yell and scream and to get excited here this morning. I simply want to have a conversation with you asking us, amen, have we seen her? Amen. To be uh, virtuous then means, amen, that uh, I'm paying attention and I have come into conformity to the moral and to the divine law of God. Amen. And these laws now are, amen, the foundation and the authority by which I live my life, amen, and the actions by which I take in my life. But I want to say something to us this morning, or this afternoon, I should say, and that is that the mere performance of virtual acts do not denote, amen, or denominate that a person themselves is virtuous. I know that it may seem, amen, to be somewhat, amen, a tongue twister, but I want us to understand that it is possible that an individual now uh, has an ability same time, amen, not being virtuous or having virtual character as their true essence and ability. It is possible, amen, to make, amen, or to perform acts of morality, but lack true character and essence. And as a matter of fact, amen, as we begin even to consider in our world, that is a word, man, that they use and, and they call an individual so, and this, amen, perhaps is uh, 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 consistent with one that is an actor or a performer of the art. In other words, amen, a virtuoso is one that has been considered by our world to be a genius in their performance. Uh, but I want to pause for a moment and I want us to understand that a true virtuous woman does not perform simply because or cause of what other people expect out of her. Amen. While she does perform skillfully, but she does what she does, not simply because people are watching, but she does what she does because that's who she is. That's what makes, amen, that's one of the things that makes a virtuous woman in our day so rare and so scarce because, man, we live in a day and in a time to external expectations. But this is something different because when we're talking about being a virtuous woman, then essentially what we're saying, amen, is that she has sound moral character, not because people are watching, but even when nobody is watching, she does what she's supposed to do because that's simply who she is. 
Thank you, Lord. Man, and so when we began to consider uh, this word and then to be virtuous, then we look at the scripture here, we find that, man, this book of Proverbs was written uh, by one, amen, the Bible calls King uh, Lemuel. And when we began to further study King Lemuel, then we find out, amen, exactly who this king is. Essentially, King Lemuel is the king, the famous king, Solomon. And you know who Solomon was, amen, the Bible declares to us that Solomon, man, was not only the wisest man to ever live, but Solomon was the son of the famous King David, the king of Israel. And as Solomon is writing here in the book of Proverbs, amen, he's writing to bring to our remembrance and to rehearse to the hearers, amen, verse number one in chapter 31 declares that Solomon is writing these writings, amen, to remind us of prophecies or words that have been spoken by his mother. Thank you, Lord. And I believe that it's very important because in this generation in which we are living, we need wise counsel. We need, thank you, Lord, we need, amen, words of wisdom that have been passed down from previous generations. I can hear my mother, I can hear my father, as oftentimes they would tell me, they said, anybody that has lived at least one day or one hour longer than you have can tell you something. This is important, brothers and sisters, in the generation and the time in which we live for the Bible. It declares unto us that there is safety in the multitude of counsel. And so it is a wise thing that we would give our ear to the counsel of a virtuous woman. Well, it is here, amen, that King Solomon is speaking of the prophecies of his mother. And I found it very that when we began, amen, to consider who Solomon's mother was, amen, then it really brings into focus and perspective to the words, amen, about the virtuous woman. We understand in the Bible, amen, that Solomon was the son of an adulteress. My God, Solomon was the son of adulteress. You know Solomon's mother, amen, she's the famous woman by the name of Sheba, for the Bible declares, you remember it, that she was married, amen, to Uriah, one of the captains in King David, Solomon's fathers, in his army. And the Bible declares, amen, that David had gone into Bathsheba. I'm going to give y'all the cliff notes today. David had gone into Bathsheba when he should have been out to war taking care of the responsibilities as a king. And the Bible declared that David went in and committed adultery with Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah. And the Bible declared that David tried to hide, amen, this sin by sending, amen, the faithful servant Uriah back out to battle and placing him on the front line in the hottest part of the battle. Amen. You know David's mind, amen, his desire, amen, as was that his sin might be covered up, amen, by allowing Uriah to be killed in action. Amen. But you know how God works. And then the Bible declares that Uriah was so committed to David that he didn't want to go back out to battle. But while he was at home, amen, Uriah did not go in into being intimate with his wife Bathsheba. And so the Bible declares that Uriah gets out there. I'm not preaching, I'm talking real fast, y'all. Amen, amen. Uriah gets back out to the battlefield, amen, and is essentially killed in battle. And David sees or feels, amen, as if his sin has been covered. Thank you, Lord. This is what I like about God. Bible declares that what is done in the darkness is going to be brought to the light. I'm still talking about a virtuous woman. Amen. Can you have you seen her? Amen. But the Bible, the Bible declares amen that uh, David amen the son of the prophet Nathan comes to David and tells David that God sees and knows what you have done and David begins to repent and so the Bible declares that David and Bathsheba get together and get married, but I like this about the Bible because it always, 
amen, refers to Bathsheba never as the wife of David, but always Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah. And the Bible, the Bible declares, amen, that after Bathsheba and David got married, they had a son, but amen, this son died because God does not allow sin to go unpunished. And so the Bible declares that this son dies and dies. Amen. The Bible declares that God gives them another son by the name of Solomon. Hallelujah. And it is this Solomon that we're speaking of today that is rehearsing in our ears the prophecy and the wisdom of words that he has heard from the mouth of his mother Bathsheba. Amen. This word virtuous. Amen. It's not one that seemingly we are so familiar with in our day, but when I began to look at this word virtuous in the Hebrew, that is a term that is used, which is E-S-H-E-T hyphen, amen, C-H-A-Y-I-L, amen, and this terminology that is used, Eshet, amen, the first word, uh, Eshet means woman, and the second word, Shael, it is defined In other words, this word means an excellent woman, one who is spiritual, one that is capable, intelligent, and or virtuous. Thank you, Lord. When I began to look at this, when I began to look at this word virtuous, then we see and we find that this word is a rare word. Amen. Because even when we look into the word of the Lord and we look at scripture, we only see this word virtuous mentioned three times in the entire Bible. And the first time we see this word, amen, virtuous, it is in the book of Ruth as it is began to explain and to describe to us a woman of brave character by the name of Ruth. And the Bible declares that Ruth now is attached to her mother-in-law who herself is a widow, but it speaks to us as to Ruth, amen, ability, amen, and her fervor to persevere even in the face of loss and adversity. And so one of the first things we've got to understand, amen, is that the reason why a virtuous woman is so rare in our day is because a virtuous woman has the ability, amen, to persevere through adversity and to still come out on top. Thank you, Lord. I'm still talking about who can find a virtuous woman and have you seen her. Amen. So we see first this virtuous woman is mentioned in Scripture in the book of Ruth chapter number three. Amen. But the other two times by which we see this word, amen, virtuous, we see it in the book of Proverbs. Amen. As a matter of fact, the book of Proverbs attributes 21 verses, amen, in describing such a woman. As a matter of fact, amen, it is writing here, and I assume that the writer, amen, Solomon is spending these 21 verses explaining to us and describing to us what it means and what a virtuous woman looks like. Amen. Because her existence is so rare. And because she is so rare, even peradventure, he may be afraid that we as writers may not be able to identify her because she is so rare. I'm almost finished y'all. Thank you Lord. Amen. Here, amen, in verse number 11 in particular. Amen. The writer here Solomon begins to explain and to describe to us as readers amen, what the scriptures describe as a virtuous woman. I know we got a lot of self-proclaiming 
himself professing uh, virtuous women. But can I tell you tonight, today, uh, amen, that everybody that considers themselves to be virtuous may not be virtuous. Uh, because just because we perform virtuous acts, it does not mean that that is the essence of our true character and foundation. Uh, amen. But a true virtuous woman, according to Proverbs 31, uh, verse number 11, number 1, uh, a virtuous woman is trustworthy. Uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, virtuous woman is trustworthy. You can put that in your notes here. Uh, in other words, a virtuous woman is trustworthy or able uh, to be relied upon as being honest and truthful. Uh, I like those two words that are synonymous with trustworthy. These words are reliable and dependable. Number two, a virtuous woman, according to verse number 12, is an encourager. In other words, a virtuous woman gives support and confidence to those that are around her. She's not self-absorbed. She's not self-centered. But she is a great supporter. Virtuous woman number three is a woman that is diligent in her work. Verse 13. In other words, amen, being diligent, she is consistent, amen, in working with her hands. She's not up to date and down tomorrow, but she is consistent. I like what the scripture says, being steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And I like to suggest to us today that it does not mean that because she is steadfast, does not mean that she does not encounter adversity or difficulty, but because she's got something down on the inside. I'm trying to stay in my seat, y'all, but I'm talking about a virtuous woman. Have you seen her? Amen. This virtuous woman has something on the inside that when she would Uh, then that means that she is respectable. Not to preach 
<laughs> I'm just talking real fast because I'm excited. <laughs> I was standing in the mirror today. <laughs> and as I began to think about the importance of a virtuous woman, <laughs> could not help but think about my own wife, First Lady Kimberly Crenshaw. <laughs>
brothers and his sisters, it is a vice of our world and our culture. Amen. Unfortunately, it seems that we only celebrate greatness and significance in retrospect. But while we yet have our loved ones and the memories of our loved ones, the words that they have spoken in our lives, I encourage us today to be diligent, amen, to appreciate, to celebrate, and to thank God for those that he's given into our lives, amen, to rear us. I give God praise today. I'm done. I'm closed. I'm not going to close seven times today. I'm closed and I'm going to stay closed. But as I close, as I bring this stream to an end, I want us to bow our heads today as we remember, amen, the greatest, one of the greatest gifts that God has given to humanity and given a mother to us all. I want us to pray today because there's some mother out there Amen. That is struggling from a loss of identity, is struggling with the pressures of the culture that is telling her what she ought to be, that is kicking against being a true virtuous woman. I want us to pray for that woman, not only for that woman, but I want us to pray for the mothers today, amen, that are yet in the land of the living, that have, but have had the misfortune of having to bury their offspring. The mothers that are hurting when they look at the conditions of our world, all of the things that are happening, want us to pray that God would encourage and strengthen their hearts today. Let's bow our heads, Father, in that name that is above every name, in the name of Jesus. Again, God, we thank you for the words that have been spoken today, for the words that have been heard today. I pray that they not be soon forgotten, but that we would hide them in our hearts. You can call us at 
Someone 